Hello, my name is Stephanie, and I've been drawing fairies for a while now. I also have a small business called Fairy Wing Studio because I really have a bit of an obsession. Recently, I thought it would be fun to upload some time lapses of my drawings on YouTube, so here I am. Instead of playing some music in the background, it seemed like a nice opportunity to share a bit about what I know about the history, mythology, folklore, etc. about the fae. I'm starting with an infamous fairy called the Changeling, and I assume you must have some curiosity about this particular fairy as well, since you're watching this video. It's possible myths and folklore about the Changeling have always existed, but the first evidence, so far, found mentioning them was in the 1200s, and proof of a true belief in them as recently as the 19th century. Perhaps there are those living secluded lives who may yet believe in their existence. <laughs> So, what is a changeling? A changeling is essentially a replacement, or a wolf in sheep's clothing, if you will. They are what is left behind when a mortal is stolen away to fairyland. What do changelings look like? Changelings will, in all cases, look different. They are in a constant endeavor to appear as the human they've switched places with. There are a few traits that tend to repeat themselves in their appearance, however, hence how we can begin to suspect a fairy napping. This drawing is inspired by the common over-large eyes and wide mouth with withering and worn skin. In some cases, they were also said to be overly hairy. The most common sign of a changeling, however, is actually odd behavior such as constant crying or moodiness, and a really big appetite, <laughs> followed closely by a body that seems to have wasted away overnight. In the infamous Malleus Maleficarum, also known as the Witch's Hammer, written in 1486, the author gives some description of this phenomenon. For such children are always miserable and crying, and although four or five mothers could hardly supply enough milk for them, they never grow fat, yet are heavy beyond the ordinary. Of course, the extremist author of this book also believed the sins of the parents were the cause of the changeling switch, but there's little to support that argument beyond this particular book. From the vast number of stories told, the changeling switch places for reasons only they can truly know. This does not, however, prevent us from coming up with our own ideas, and we have crafted many theories on the matter. Most of Europe mainly believed fairies would steal children because they thought they were beautiful. They wanted to bring them into fairyland to create more lovely fairy babies, enjoy their company, or maybe even to just ease the burden of manual labor. There are a few stories which tell us that in some cases, they'd steal their own fairy children to complete a switch with a human child. In these cases, when the mothers of those stolen fairy babies found their children, they'd take it upon themselves to help the human mothers work through the loopholes of the fae to have their own human children returned. For while the fae find the fair humans more beautiful than their own, some of them still love their children deeply enough to want to keep them for themselves, no matter how they look. Dark and furry is fine if they're mine, you might say. It's interesting that in these tales, the fairies are just as much a victim as the humans. Another belief shared with us by the Lady Wild includes fairies who are considered evil. They had made a pact with the devil, but they'd lost, and now owe him tribute. Instead of sacrificing one of their own, the good people instead steal babies from mortals and use their lives to fulfill the debt. 
This particular belief was less common. Most likely, as the majority of changeling stories do not touch on this belief. It was much more popular to believe the children were safe and happy among the Fae. Maybe lonely at the worst, but well taken care of. Yet another rationale was one in which the elderly Fae would sometimes wish for a more luxurious end to their long lives as they drifted from this life into whatever waits after. Slipping under the covers into the place of a lovely human baby whom their kin could whisk away, they would then lap up the love and attention once meant for the child they replaced. The fairies didn't always leave behind one of their own as a replacement. Sometimes they would craft a spell to animate a wooden log or piece of wood or even some sort of uh, mold made in the likeness of the fairy nap. As the spell would wear off, it would appear to their loved ones that they had perished, while in fact they lived on in fairyland with the good people. In Scandinavia, it was often thought that trolls could be held liable for child switchery. This came from a desire to improve the lives of their own children, since they believed a life among the humans was much better for their troll babies. One of the most common ways to convince a troll to return their children mostly consisted of brutal beatings. The idea was to show the trolls the error of their ways and force their hand to take back the unwanted false child. Less common, but also possible, was showing a lot of kindness to a troll changeling in the hopes that the trolls would take care of their own child just as well. All of it done in a hope that their babies would be returned to them. Is there a way to get rid of a changeling? Nothing is guaranteed when it comes to dealing with the Fae, and the changeling is, of course, not an exception. We found many ways to attempt to force the fairies to return the stolen, but the success, well, that came on a case-to-case basis. Unfortunately, violence is a close bedfellow with any mention of a changeling. But not from them, actually. It is our response to the kidnapping and the fear for those that we love that brings out the worst in us. There are a large number of stories, which include various forms of violence, meant to force the fairy to reveal itself, kill it, or force it to escape in a desperate act of self-preservation. The idea was that once the fairy had gone, the child would then be returned. This was never a given, however, and I would imagine anyone who actually attempted such acts was disappointed in their endeavors. You don't have to dig far or long to start running into stomach-twisting details about what has been done to drive away a changeling. What is interesting is that documentation of this fairy exists not only in stories retold, but also in old courthouse records where family members were charged with crimes varying from torture to murder, believing that one of their loved ones had been a changeling. One such well-recorded instance is that of the murder of Bridget Cleary, who was burned to death by her husband in 1895. She was a beautiful, free-spirited young woman who was well-known and liked. She was fond of the fairy hills and would visit them often, heedless of any danger that might be found there, or, more importantly, of the danger from those who feared the good people. Shortly before her death, She fell ill with something akin to a cold, and soon after, her husband seemed to become convinced she was a changeling. I'm not going to go into the details. Those are easy enough to look up if you're so inclined. He claimed to attempt to drive away the changeling so his wife could return. He later even claimed she was two inches taller than his wife had been, proof that she was not herself. Skeptics, of course, have stated he probably didn't truly believe she was a fairy, but killed her out of some sort of deep jealousy. In any case, it's a well-documented and disturbingly interesting example of this fairy having a real-life impact.
Whether you believe in the changeling or not, its effects on our world are real and documented. On a lighter note, there were also non-violent ways to rid a changeling from your home. It was apparently paramount that the changeling not reveal itself. They did go to great lengths to trick us, after all. Once any doubt had been removed from those it was trying to befuddle, it would up and disappear. Sometimes simply vanish, or quite often, it would run pell-mell up the chimney. Strangely enough, surprising a changeling was said to be wildly effective. If you have eggs, you're in luck because all over Europe there are stories of those who grabbed a bunch of eggshells and freed themselves from the presence of these unwelcome fae. This could be accomplished by either baking them into some form of bakery, bringing them to a raging boil, or even brewing them. Brewing beer in an eggshell must have been quite a task. Sound odd? That was apparently exactly the point. No one in their right mind would gift someone an eggshell muffin. <laughs> the strangeness of this practice was therefore perfect for stunning a fairy changeling. There is also a story of a young girl who made a pudding for a suspected changeling with an entire pig hidden inside. The off-the-wall craziness of these approaches were perfect since the fairy would never have seen or heard of such a thing. Fairies live a long time. It's quite difficult to surprise them, since they've been around the block a time or two. Anyway, such would be their amazement that they'd be unable to contain their glee and betray themselves, often with exclamations of their long years and total disbelief. At this point, they'd either have to make a quick run for it to dodge a fatal blow, or simply disappear. If the family was lucky, their stolen child would be returned to them. Is it possible to avoid a changeling altogether? The best offense is a good defense. We did not only invent ways to drive away changelings once they'd arrived. There are also many ways in which to dissuade a fairy from taking someone to begin with. Those most at risk were infants, and therefore the moment they were born, action was taken, sometimes even before they were born. Iron is well known to repel the fae, and any item made with such could be placed in or above a baby's cradle. Even placing a pin in a baby's diaper wrappings could be an effective deterrent. Before a babe even made it to their cradle, they could be wrapped in their parents' clothing or any clothing passed through the smoke of a fire. Walking around them in circles with a burning flame was also an option and could be done even as the baby was being born. These means were likely practiced even before Christianity added its own flavor. Baptism, holy water, and the Bible would also become staples of changeling proofing a baby. Naming a baby was perhaps the most effective way to protect them from the good people. There was believed to be much power in a name and it would protect the baby and its soul from the theft of those who might have it. Even with all that and more, nothing could actually guarantee safety. Parents would need to keep a close eye on their child, whether they'd fairy-proofed or not. But they had to be careful. Watching over a child was all well and good. But it was necessary to remember not to speak too fondly of them, or comment on how adorable their cute little pink cheeks were. Some comments could pull the attention of the fae, and they might covet the child for their own. Why do the stories and belief in the changeling seem to have so much staying power? Not only have changeling stories existed a long time, but they also tend to hold similar stories, no matter the distance traveled across Europe. They were a very frightening aspect. It was impossible to know when the hidden people might be near. Not to mention, there wasn't a sure way to keep them at bay. This fear of what we cannot see and cannot control no doubt added to the depth of the belief in this fairy. It's also a sad truth that life is difficult. 
Not everyone is given the chance to live a full life. And infant mortality was very high when many of these stories were widely spread. When answers are not readily available, some may have reached for the belief in changelings. They were and may still be a ready scapegoat for the cruelty of a life taken. Perhaps it's easier to imagine a loved one who died too soon, or a child taken early from the world, or a baby, especially one not yet baptized, and believe them not to be gone, but instead safe, warm, and full-bellied, dancing with the fairies. There's certainly more information about fairy changelings, but that's much of what I have handy. There's also a web page on my website dedicated to the changeling if you're curious, and you can find the link below. I will also be adding more fairies in the future, so watch for that if this was of interest to you. I'll soon be sharing another drawing and some tidbits about the elusive brownie, another well-known fairy that has been folded into the lore of modern works such as Harry Potter in the form of Dobby the house elf, and in the Spiderwick Chronicles as a brownie named Thimbletack. They are a rare breed of fairy who tend to live near or even with us, and therefore have left us with many sightings and stories. Thank you for sharing your time with me, and I hope to chat with you again soon. Take care.